Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to see you with us. If you've just joined us, what is actually going on here? You're watching Heroes of the Dorm. This is a college tournament of massive proportions, something really unprecedented. And they're playing the game Heroes of the Storm. I'm Manuel Grubby Schenkhuizen, and with me is Tim Trixler Frazier, and we're happy to be bringing this to you. Let's take a little bit of a look at what Heroes of the Storm exactly is. Welcome to Heroes of the Storm, Blizzard Entertainment's action-packed team brawler. Players can choose from a variety of Blizzard heroes, each with unique strengths and weaknesses, to create five-player team compositions that support versatile strategies. These strategies are then put to the test on a diverse set of battlegrounds, each with their own unique objectives. Hire the Ghost Pirate Blackheart. Summon a powerful Grave Golem. Every battleground is different and presents a unique environment for competition. However, the criteria for victory is constant. Destroy the opposing team's core. Heroes will grow in power and talent over the course of a single game as they take out minions, enemy fortifications, and of course, the opposing team's heroes. Your effectiveness at teamwork and collaborative play will make or break you. And the Heroes of the Dorm it's a tournament has been so exciting so far while the players have been playing Heroes of the Storm. Obviously, it's a little bit more difficult than just finishing off your opponent's core. There's a lot of strategy, a lot of work, and we've had a lot of teams over the last couple of weeks going at it. Over 880 teams have submitted to play in, and we're in the middle, or the later stages, actually, of the entire tournament. Right now, we are in the round of 16, and we're setting up for the uh, round of eight, which will be the Epic Eight happening next week on Saturday. So uh, make sure to, if you are talking about these games, let us know at hashtag Storm the Dorm. We'll be going to the uh, the uh, Epic Finals, the Heroic Four, in the next couple of weeks as we're building up, getting ready for all that action. But man, it's been a really long road and an intense road so far for a lot of these teams. Yeah, all the teams that are here, they can be said to be winners already. They're kind of doing the dream. They're playing video games at a high competitive level and they're showing this is a legitimate something, a legitimate sport to be engaged in, we call the esports. Uh, all of these teams have already uh, laid by the wayside many of their opponents that they have defeated and now they're playing on some of the biggest stage possible here in Heroes of the Dorm on ESPN3. And they're playing for some massive rewards overall. They're getting a ton of awesome stuff. All teams that have played in the Heroes of the Dorm have gotten free beta access and an exclusive in-game portrait of Asmodan, where the hero is currently in the game. The top 64 teams have gotten $40 and battles on that balance that they can use on any Blizzard product. Or, of course, for Heroes of the Storm, you can grab some heroes and some skins. And the top four teams will be getting an epic gaming system from CyberPower PC featuring components from Intel, Gigabyte, and Rosewill, plus great hardware from HyperX and Steel Series. And then overall, the uh, two best college teams will move on to the Grand Finals and claim the prize of free tuition and have the right to call them the Heroes of the Dorm uh, winners, which is, uh, of course, great bragging rights. Of course, it's great to have uh, some college tuition on site, but it's all about that Heroes of the Dorm uh, prize <laughs> man for winning it, you know? Yeah, some really nice, uh, great prizes there. And only two teams will be winning that grand prize. But any progress being made here, going to uh, the Epic Eight or the Heroic Four, is already worthy and commendable to a large degree. Gotta agree with you. And let's look at the teams that have made it this far already. A total of 16 teams have been competing for today uh, and really just going at it. We have a couple of teams left over, but so far you can see Boston College, Western Ontario, Texas A&M, Arizona State, Indiana, and Connecticut have all made it to the Epic Eight. The question is, who between Kansas State and Cal Berkeley will make it forward? And of course, Washington and UC Irvine, which will be our next match. Yeah, uh, the University of Washington uh, using the team name Hot Dogs and University of California Irvine playing against them. That's actually a little bit my pick, my prediction to maybe take this tournament. Uh, Irvine there, uh, they have done really well in competitions like this. They're using the team Table Flip. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see the power level that they will be showing today. Man, Hot Dogs versus Table Flip, an exciting match for the ages, that's for sure. I'm just, uh, I'm ready to see who's playing exactly for Team Hot Dogs. That's that's a major name to be actually, um, uh, of course, um, sponsoring yourself with, if you will. Uh, so <laughs> looking at to it, Laughing will be the first hero, Yugapa, Ice Shiny, Panda Bear, and Kawaii Rice will be on Team Hot Dogs. And Panda hey. Bear and Kawaii Rice? are players that we've probably hit a couple times on ladder. 
Kawaii. Yeah, I've actually played a lot of competitions against Kawaii Rice. He's a player that I know from other competitive games, and I didn't know he was playing here. It's uh, it's cool to see a familiar name there. He definitely was a very good player in another game, a StarCraft, uh, a one-on-one -on -one game, and now he's moved on to Heroes of the Storm and uh, will be repping as a team player, a different experience. But I'm sure they have lots of practice already. I'm very excited to see what Washington will be bringing to the table there. Well, an experienced player indeed. We'll see how they will actually handle everything. But on the other side, we have Team Table Flip, Mr. X, Bloody Khan, uh, Balkan Breakfast, X, Fishy. So, Mr. X is actually a player that I've seen a majority of the time playing the game on his free time. I've actually played against him a couple of times. Very, very strong player. But overall, this match will be pretty darn close. We have experienced players like Kawhi Rice. We have players that have been around the game for a while. Mr. X can't wait to see what exactly will be happening in this Heroes of the Door matchup. Yeah, I mean, uh, the seventh match of the day, perhaps one of the most spectacular ones as we recognize names and their pedigree and their accomplishments in the competitive gaming world on both sides of the team. Well, remember, we will be going to the Battlegrounds Curse Tall. We've been showing it to you all day, but remember, whenever you are playing it, you have to collect three tributes. The three tributes will, of course, curse your opponents, which will allow you to split push, of course, and what use whatever strategy you would like. This is a bigger map. There's a lot of flex going on. Uh, there's a lot of strategies and innovation that we've been seeing today just in particular so can't wait to see what will be happening on this map as it will be the first one all right we will have the privilege to see that exactly now firsthand as we're going to the draft the hero choice which is oh so important though not completely conclusive execution will be of paramount importance first choice here by Khan he will be playing on the Uther hero it's not a pick that we've seen prioritized in number one slot all too much, but I definitely like the devout old man, the paladin, and the defender of the light. Can't go wrong with the first pick, Uther, here, so we'll be having hot dogs follow up here with Ice Shiny grabbing Sylvanas. We've been seeing Sylvanas in a majority of fights. Her Wailing Arrow, the one that can silence her opponents, are, is very, very strong. Laughing One will be grabbing Tassadar as well. And we'll be on the lookout to see if Tassadar will be using his Force Wall which is a zoning mechanic and obstructing movement or his Archon heroic ability, which adds a lot of area of effect damage. Mr. X there going on Taronda, which is a support character, the second one already. A high prioritization here for support characters by Table Flip. Mr. X, yeah, Tur playing Taronda, and Taronda is a very aggressive support. She is supporty, but she really comes in when she uses her Hunter Mark ability, which allows you to, you and your team, to put extra damage on a character. X Fishy will follow up into Vala here for a strong assassin. Again, we've seen her almost every single match. Just because she's a great foundation, she does a lot of things very, very well if you are mechanically playing her correctly. Kawaii Rides going with the ETC. They've decided it's time to enlist a warrior on their side. And ETC is the one they'll be picking. Look for him to join battle late. Not because he's tardy, but because he has that stage dive ability. And he'll be joined with U by Ugapa going on Jaina. Jaina bringing that burst. We've been seeing it a lot throughout the games. And if you're on point with her, you can really eliminate a team very quickly. Vladi will be following up into Diablo here for the uh, fourth pick for table flip. And the fifth pick will be popping up pretty soon. But overall, their composition is looking like a lot of lockdown. And wow, someone oh, new for us. yeah. One of your favorites, Grubby. Sergeant Hammer, my top two favorite heroes in Heroes of the Storm. She is riding a siege tank. And it's what you think it is. It's a tank. She's riding that tank and... This is not a quick moving hero. It's kind of slow, it can go into siege mode and just shell away at distant enemies. And that is a unique interaction, that's a unique hero. And that's why she's called a specialist, a specialist role. Well, the uh, hot dogs will be finishing up with a healing support here. They're going to be picking up Panda Bear. More sustaining heal, if you will, and a little bit more damage mitigation with her abilities. But again, a very strong pickup with the Brightwing. So, Panda Bear will be the last pickup here for their uh, the teams. Uh, we're going to be going into Cursed Hollow pretty darn soon. All right, let's take a look at that. I'm curious to see how that Sergeant Hammer pick will be working out. Yeah. It's very important to protect this hero as the damage she puts out is very high, but her sustenance, her uh, her fortitude is on the lower side. So if you can get the jump on her, she's easy pickings. But if you can't get to her due to excellent positioning and protection from allies, well, she's going to be your worst nightmare. 
there is a factor that we have to consider for table flip, and that's the uh, curse, the tributes when they spawn. Will Sergeant Hammer, because of her lack of mobility, be around the area? But really quickly, let's introduce our heroes. You've got uh, Laughing One, Panda Bear, right above that. We'll be having uh, the teammates of that. I Shiny for playing for the Hot Dogs, and of course, Kawaii Rice. Let's go ahead and check out the far right really quickly and get an idea of what exactly uh, Bloody would play in Diablo. Let's check out the middle, as we'll see Uther is sitting there for a con, and of course, three members in the bottom. It's going to be X Fishy, and of course, Sergeant Hammer being played uh, by balanced breakfast and mr x with toronda all right a one one three split by the red team table flip there uh, representing uh, university of california irvine and uh yeah they have three people at the bottom the same situation on the flip side of the river laughing one and panda bear and ugapa there with three members so uh, this is a situation that we've seen before, a concentration of strength here at the bottom. Panda Bear trying to get a little bit of information there in those bushes, but will be spotted immediately by the mines that Hammer has put down. Yeah, this is a very aggressive strategy here from Balance Breakfast and the rest of his team, but uh, with Panda Bear laughing and Yugapa really just kind of mashing this lane, Sergeant Hammer won't be able to start sieging up and of course breaking down those turrets. Khan will show up and we'll see a lot of the majority of aggression down here in the bottom lane, but let's check out the other lanes. Let's check out mid lane and then we'll go to the top lane. In mid lane, we got Savannah uh, versus Fishy. We got bow and arrows versus crossbows. A pretty aggressive aggressive lane if you will there is a lot of takedown potential so we'll have to jump in between here and we'll get the chance and check out the top lane both our warriors will be in the top lane with uh, Diablo versus uh, uh, ETC so Kawhi Rice versus Bloody. Yeah and not much should be happening in these lanes you'll hear us blow up with excitement <laughs> if one of the heroes gets taken down in this mano a mano but it should not be happening as uh, there's no great amount of burst damage in a one versus one situation so they're just looking to kind of hold their own gather up experience here do that little move there that <laughs> diablo loves to do push him into towers but no absolutely big harm done we go back to the bottom lane where we've got those three members there uh, trying to push out each other A nice lunar flare there the follow-up hammer of justice from khan a lot of damage being put on panda bear but it was not lethal damage yet now we see the sea champ look at that the range and damage is increased for balanced breakfast whenever he is in this mode but there is a downside he cannot quickly move away he will actually be turned into a pig by Panda Bear with the polymorph ability, because she don't like him doing that. Yeah, I like the uh, pick of Yugapa, uh, picking up Jaina and Laughing One grabbing Tassar. They have a lot of poke available with their abilities, so if Balance Breakfast does decide to up, they can really apply a lot of damage very quickly, forcing Khan and Mr. X to expend their heals very quickly. We do have a tribute now spawning, though, right above this location. Balance Breakfast is heading up to that area. Gonna drop down a couple of mines. That's another feature that Balance Breakfast does have. Uh, does have is able to really put those mines down if teammates walk in or opponents walk into them they take a lot of damage pretty quickly so now we see no one really paying the tribute any mind we've got three people at the bottom for both teams who still have all the other members in their lane but what's happening now is that sylvana's pulled herself away eyes shiny there for the washington hot dogs and she's trying to capture that tribute but no says mr x cancelled by the lunar flare x fishy follows in hot pursuit and now it's a four versus four situation here I like how everyone's kind of gravitated towards this area over a amount Slowly, of time. They realize, right? they realize no one's grabbing the tribute, and now <laughs> suddenly we have a four-on-four -four situation. Balance Breakfast needs to be careful in the back line. You see her being very, very careful now, sieging up. And now Mr. X and Khan slowly have gained more ground with small sieging up, and they're going to try and grab this tribute. Um, it does seem like the Hot Dogs realize they're going to eventually give this up as they have sent someone in the middle lane to grab that experience. But this tribute has been a hard point for both, he both teams. Yep, uh, as you mentioned, these three heroes here for the Washington team are, have great poke ability. They can kind of harry and harass the opponent from a long distance and this is useful to try and interrupt the enemy tribute acquisition and for this reason uh, the Savannah's player went back to the middle lane and the Vala player had to finish uh, and, and follow up. So once again here I shiny versus X fishy and it's a three versus three here and no one really seems to be able to get the upper hand yet. yeah there's a shield there's a lot of healing down here all four supports that are in this game are currently in the bottom lane which means there's a lot of damage mitigation a lot of uh, fixing and healing that is really helpful here and i like what balance breakfast is doing 
she's trying to put a lot of pressure on the bottom lane here, which forces the team to come deal with her, which allows Khan or maybe Mr. X to come up and grab this tribute. But you'll see both teams just poking each other left and right. This will be a long, drawn-out fight, but it looks like eventually Mr. X is going to be able to grab it. No, just <laughs> barely misses it. The polymorph from Panda Bear is just a little too much. Panda Bear, though, taking some damage. And now with Yagapa showing up, they might have some more poke to try and delay this from happening. Yeah, I think that was the last time they were to nice. cancel. And yeah, very nice there. Game-changing tribute. Game-changing. <laughs> Not quite yet. I mean, they got the first one, and it's worth a lot. But nice moves there by Khan. Zoning out the opponent, they were able to put enough damage on them to just dissuade them. Think of it as a bear growling and saying, I am scary. He hasn't eaten his prey yet, but they have zoned them away. And now the first tribute goes to them. Well, overall, the Hot Dogs have been able to secure a small lead. They're up a little bit more. on It's 8-8 eight eight right now, but they have more experience. They're about to hit 9 before their opponents. Balance Breakfast now taking a little damage on that turret. In the top far left corner, we're going to see Brightwing actually grab Mercenary Camps. And over here, we see Table Flip grabbing that. Panda Bear actually has a, an ability uh, called Bride that allows her to buy out some Mercenary Camps without having to actually take them out by just sitting in a... a the lane for a little bit, absorbing what we call stacks. So you'll see her occasionally do that throughout the game. And it looks like they're gonna actually have a lane transition as we have Panda Bear coming to the top, which means at any point, if she needs to, she can use what we call a phase shift, which allows her to jump down. And she's gonna need it soon as there's a tribute in the very far bottom. Yeah, and the reason she's there, she's trying to collect a little bit of extra experience and then join her allies here at this tribute. If they can get level 10, they can all but guarantee the acquisition of this tribute. So what Kawaii Rice is doing now, Sure, that's just to bait the opponent and force them to keep interrupting. But now they've got level 10, and if they want, they can jump on Mistax. Well, Mistax is going to be forced to pull back. You do not want to fight right now. And this is a story we've seen uh, multiple times. Every team can grab level 10 before their opponents should be able to secure a tribute, and it worked out here for the hot dogs. So table flip. Now needs to find a way to grab level 10 themselves. They're getting ever so close, so they're a few seconds away from doing so. Let's go ahead and check out the, uh, the middle lane just to see what's going on between Savannah and Bala. It looks like uh, X Fishy's a little bit weaker than I Shiny, so I Shiny seems to be doing very well in this lane. However, none have really taken out a turret overall, so the aggressive play from both heroes seems to be kind of uh, flattening out, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Well, now two, uh, t level 10 was reached on both sides, and we kind of told you already, we promised you fireworks. Both of these teams have an, aggress uh, an impressive pedigree, an impressive, uh, impressive competitive history. They're good players. We expect high-level play. And it doesn't necessarily mean fireworks in the beginning of the game. Zero takedowns for both teams. It means there were no rookie mistakes being made. But when the fight starts, it will happen furiously, Trixer. That's true, and we might have a fight actually here in the top lane. Izagapa does come in for a gank, but teams they actually get caught by his uh, opponents. We see two members fall, and that's going to be a nice pickup here for Table Flit. Can they run down and grab the tribute? No, it was secured here for Hot Dogs, so they did lose two members, but they were able to sneak away the tribute, so not the worst loss overall. Yeah, University of Washington able to get that tribute, but I'm not 100% sure it was worth it. They lost two of their heroes there, but the tribute is theirs. The levels are in parity, both uh, level 11. Well, now what's happening is a decisive move for Table Flip from UC bottom Irvine lane. to get that gone. Let's get the gold to be grabbed. Let's check out oh, the bottom lane wow. here. As it looks like Sergeant Hammer was uh, actually picked off here by Ice Shiny and Kawaii Rice. Nice pickup by them, but they're going to have to deal with that gold that was grabbed in the top lane here by the Table Flip team. All right, uh, Jaina in the meantime trying to capture this bruiser camp by herself is getting a little bit hurt there. I'm not actually sure that she can defeat this camp without she's getting taken help. down, but she's getting some help there. She's there to help us. She'll need some help from her teammates. A nice job here from Miguel Galvaz. They'll be able to secure that. And the top lane is being defended by only the support right now. Let's go ahead and check that out and see if the golem's getting much damage on. Yeah, it's taking out a turret and a gate. Might potentially get a second turret as well, but a tribute has now spawned. And the blue team, if they can secure this, the hot dogs, from Washington, they'll be able to get a curse. Table Flip needs to deny this if possible. Yeah, so the Hot Dogs want to try and buy some time. She's still defending the Grave Golem there, the Bright Wing up there. So that's a four versus five. They need to buy a little bit of time. Golem is going to be going down soon. A good position here for the Hot Dogs from Washington College. 
Hot Dogs just hit level 13 and got a nice little power spike here. But a solid team fight from Table Flip could turn it around the tide. They do not want to allow this to go to the Hot Dogs. They're trying their best, poking ever so surely. They are pretty far away from hitting level 13. So if they engage, they need to do it quickly. The problem is they have Sergeant Hammer, so it's actually very hard to force a fast engagement. Here we go, though, laughing, charging in. Laughing, charging in, uh, jump from ETC, an immediate takedown there on the Taranda, but they trade blows one for one. It's a four versus four, Kawaii Rice trying to run away. Diablo is taken out, Tossed is taken out, it's a 3v3. Everyone is so low, this is so down and dirty and chaotic. Balanced Breakfast and Fishy coming in, trying to secure a couple takedowns. Kawaii Rice in trouble, but it looks like the Assassins and Balanced Breakfast, the tank, chugging along, trying to secure a few more takedowns, but they will deny the tribute. Oh. It's a table oh, flip having two out of three tributes. Yeah, you see Irvine there squeezing the last bit out of the toothpaste uh, tube as they had two heroes versus three, but due to their relative health and the opponents being so damaged, they were able to push them out and get that tribute. And the, the crucial point as had they given it away, as you said, curse would be upon them. Hot Dogs would be casting that curse on Table Flip. And now it's a two out of three versus two out of three situation. It's exciting to see how close these team fights have been, though, and you can just see the level that both these teams are on. Table Flip almost gets ganked down here as they see Sergeant Hammer plant balance breakfast, taking damage from Ice Shiny Yugaba and Kawaii Rice, but was able to boost away. So nicely done. And the very far top lane, we do have Brightwing and a couple of Sea Giants pushing down that fort. So Mr. X is going to be forced to defend against this. Yep, and uh, defending against it, he is. The Sea Giants throw. Throwing those rocks there and trying to take down those towers. Wall will go down, the gate will go down, that tower will go down, but probably one tower will be able to be saved by Mistax. Big action happening in the middle. What is happening here? Laughing one almost getting taken out. The lightning breath on him, but he goes into dimensional shift and he manages to get away. Plati now is the one that will pay for his temerity, thinking that he can take down left and one. Uther gets eliminated, and that's two heroes down. The a hot, wonderful move there. The hot dog just turning that fight around, and it looked like a great situation there from Table Flip, but the sheer teamwork and Kawhi Rai showing up to the fight. They're able to secure a couple of takedowns, and now all five members running down to the goal in the bottom left corner. We do have Vala and Sergeant Hammer actually to the right of this, where the tribute has spawned. But there are only two members here. They need to be careful because if Kawhi Rice or Yukapa just run in and grab any damage on these two heroes, they could be in for a world of hurt. Balanced Breakfast is forced to run away. Laugh and Jason decide to go ahead and pull on back, deal with the mines, and allow a shiny, his teammate, to grab that tribute. Yeah, you saw Balance Breakfast going away double time there. Those are thrusters that Sergeant Hammer can only use some of the time. She can use it every 30 seconds, which means right after she used it, if you can close the distance on her, she has no escape. So she, she had to give away and give the floor to the University of Washington. Well, with the curse up, the hot dogs are pushing their advantage. They have the golem pushing in the bottom. It will secure that fort. In the middle lane, they secured a fort themselves just by beating it down with Yugapa and Ice Shiny. They're continuing the push here as they have 37 seconds until the tribute disappears. Bloody, though, charges in. Ice Shiny in trouble. Khan and Bloody are forced to pull back a little bit, though, as they are in a bit of a weird situation. Bloody does deter everyone away with fire breath. It did burn a little bit, but not quite enough as Panda Bear is going to be able to heal through it all. Yeah, and that was three heroic abilities used for a UC Irvine, and this means that if a fight happens soon, there's four abilities up for Washington uh, University, and that means that with their hero level advantage 17 versus 15, they will have a stronger fight. And what does that mean as this curse is ending? It means they'll apply a little bit of pressure there at this top gate, and then maybe pull back and try and capture the enemy Grave Golem. Do you think the Golem's a wise choice here overall, Grubby? Yeah, I think you go there no matter what, and you create an image of capturing the Golem, maybe pull back a little bit more, and then try to interrupt or trap the opponent. That's what they're doing here. Did that Sentinel see the opponent? I think it's all laughing, but it didn't see any other members, so they are kind of aware that they are in the vicinity. The hot dogs getting a little aggressive. Oh, no. In the top left corner, Bloody will start the golem. They're wanting them to take a little bit of damage here from the golem before they finally engage. Hot dogs posturing outside, but it looks like Table Flip decides they need to pull back just for a little bit here. Now, in situations like this, in a waiting game, 
Who has the advantage with the bright being the ETC? Oh, the uh, the blue team, the hot dogs have the advantage because they can go to different lanes because they can eventually show up to the fight very, very quickly. So you see that Kawaii Rice is all the way down here in the bottom lane. Bloody, this huge terror of muscle and mass comes down to help defend against Kawaii Rice, but Kawaii Rice can leave at any moment. So watch in the top right corner as it looks like we might have a fight pretty soon as everyone's passing around this golem. Yeah, they're starting to force this golem here. As they know, like you said, Bloody, he's got to get a, he's got to get there on his mount, whereas the ETC can just jump in. 50% progress. The enemy is near. Can UC Irvine get there on time? And they're deciding probably no. The capture of the golem is complete. A fight now would be kind of too late. There's no point anymore. And they understand that Bloody does not shadow charge in. Yeah, a solid choice at this point just to defend against that golem. Soak up the experience that it gives to you and try to mitigate as much damage as possible. But the hot dogs are aware that soon there will be a tribute spawning and they're going to be able to try and grab it, especially if that golem is still on the top lane. Yep, uh, the golem is in the top lane. There are several other objectives on the map, like the one that you see right here, Siege Giants. They provide a little bit of extra pushing power, but it is dangerous. It's nice to eat honey, but it's also nice to use honey to lure the enemy in and try and trap that bee as they try to come for it. So. Either way, Brightwing clears that one up easily with the bribe ability that we've discussed before. You don't need to defeat them. You bribe the Siege Giants and they will fight for you immediately. You can use this only once every so often and it will save for this moment. Well, at the moment, you see all the objectives being grabbed. The hot dog just grabbed one more tribute. And the table flip, looking around, they're trying to find a way to come back in this game. And we have the hot dogs. They're about to hit level 20, which remember, they get their storm powers. They get a nice boost and power overall, and that will help out their team fighting ability. We have the uh, bruisers in the very far left being grabbed here by the hot dogs out to help them move towards a goal of getting level 20. And we also have everyone starting to group up in the middle. If Table Flip wants to fight, now would be the time before they hit level 20, but they have to do a pickoff. They have to do it immediately. It can't be a long, drawn-out fight where the hot dogs will win it. Yep, and now that all oh, level 20 is reached, that means an instant route will be necessary for Team Table Flip from you see Irvine, they're only 18 versus 20, and it's difficult to win fights under such circumstances. It's an uphill battle. Yeah, you really have to find a really a crazy advantage in some way or some form for you to win these type of fights. But Table Flip trying to go for it. They're going to go ahead and delay the tribute being grabbed by Panda Bear there with that owl that just hit it. Khan does catch up Hawaii Rice, but he is pretty tinky and robust. You don't want to focus him down. Laugh and take some damage from Oh, Valpepis. this could be it. This could be it. ETC jumps in. He gets the jump. Uh, is he actually out of position or is he providing a lethal distraction? We'll wait, have to wait and see what happens. Immediately, Vala gets taken down there. Blatty tries to do the lightning breath and get the damage in. Khan will be taken out. That's three heroes down. Can these two heroes do it by themselves? Bloody jumps in on the Ice Shiny. Ice Shiny is running away and Bloody will get taken down. Balance breakfast is left in the top right corner and actually Savannah so jumps in trying to take her out. Gonna have Panda Bear show up as well. And it looks like Balance breakfast will try uh, the best to kind of chug along and get away from the area, but with a Gappa showing up and I shiny, Balance <laughs> Breakfast will be forced Fly! to run away. <laughs> get away, run no. the tank. Uh, Balance Breakfast trying, hiding in every nook and cranny. You got <laughs> looks like you will oh, play him. No. Hide and seek and not going well as I shiny does seek him out. And Hot Dogs will secure a second tribute. Table Flip loses that fight substantially. Ah, oh, University of Washington does a full sweep there, taking down all five, even the unfortunate balanced breakfast who tried to hide in the bushes. He was well tracked into it. And now uh, the grave column will be attempted to be picked up by the hot dogs, by the blue team. If they can get it, they have a massive concerted push potentially at the bottom lane. This will give them a lot of advantage. Yeah, at this moment, the hot dogs are wanting to grab that goal, and you're right, it will give them advantage already. The keep on the very far bottom right have taken a couple of hits from, uh, from um, earlier pushes. So we're going to see what exactly the red team will do with this. We actually have the tribute spawning right next to the hot dogs, and this is very oh. unfortunate for Table Flip, especially with one of their members pretty far away from the area. Yeah, this is exactly where University of Washington wants to be. The tribute is right next to the grave column. That's where they want to add their brawn, their muscle to it. They want to attack here. And they don't even need to go far out of their way to capture this tribute. An attempt there with the Sentinel from the Taranda player, Mistax, to try and interrupt 
that capture, but it will not be successful. Now keep in mind, the red team is cursed. None of their defensive fortifications are actually operating. And this will last for nearly a minute. A disaster situation, as they're already down a level. They're already down two levels. They're down that storm tier talent that is so important, which they will unlock at level 20. But at this rate, they may not have it in time to try and fend off University of Washington They here. even have one of the members of Hot Dogs pushing down the middle lane. Kawhi Rice is able to secure that fort. The top fort looks like it was taken out as well. The only thing left here for Table Flip is their core and two lone turrets, which are about to be extinguished as well. Table Flip not in the best situation possible here, but it looks like they may be able to live just to get to level 20, at which they'll have to make a crazy play. Let's pull up all the forts overall. The uh, blue team, the Hot Dogs, have all six of their forts. They oh, haven't lost a single ouch. one. It is uh, pretty lopsided at the moment, but the table flip is still barely just in it. They're going to have to make a crazy play. They've got to come here. They've got to come here right now. In fact, I dare say they're a little bit too late already. Bloody knows he's late. He's going to jump in. He's going to contest this uh, capture of the grave column. He's trying to do that, but he is distracted and he's leaving his own backline undefended. Sergeant Hammer will be destroyed. There, Mistex, he's in a lot of trouble. He gets taken down. That's two takedowns. They're still vying for the capture there of that grave column, but it is a foregone conclusion. Khan, he will be taken down bloody by himself. He bloody actually gets the, the grave column. <laughs> what? Bloody, is pushing for it, is able to secure the golem, but will it matter as the entire team for the hot dogs have secured a number of takedowns? <laughs> All five members up, they stage dive the core. The core already taking damage from minions pushing down the lane. Can the hot dogs end the game here? X Fishy and Khan are here. They're gonna need a miracle defense. They need to get rid of Ice Shiny and Yugaba because they're the main damage dealers that will hurt their core. Can they do anything here? They're trying their best. Fishy moving forward, Khan chasing down Yugaba. But it looks like as the core moves down to 30%, this could oh. be game. Oh, man. This was a desperate gambit as they were trying to steal the golem there. You see Irvine, nice attempt there. Bloody actually secured that grave column. But the victory and the takedowns were all going to University of Washington. Yeah, that last goal fight actually was going pretty well there for the red team. The problem is this balanced breakfast was picked off immediately. And if they had that extra damage, maybe somehow, some way, they would have been able to, of course, prolong that game and maybe have a comeback start there. But with balance breakfast being taken off, the blue team realized, you know what, give up the goal, take out I Fishy, we can totally win the game from here, and they did. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was saying it, they were kind of late to get to that point. And since they were a little bit late, they were impatient. It means that balance breakfast on the Sergeant Hammer was perhaps slightly out of position. She would ideally like to see herself on the top right. But the situation now is the hot dogs from University of Washington are leading with a 1-0 to zero score. Yet. All the right. enemy is not down and out yet. They were not. Well... The Hot Dogs, of course, played very, very well in that game. In fact, let's show you a moment where they played particularly well with a great stage dive uh, from ETC. Here we go. We're actually at the uh, top right with a huge 5v5. Is that the table flip team needs to win a team fight over. Kawhi Rice, though, did a fantastic stage dive to cut off the avenue where table flip could have ran away. And you see members getting picked off two, three at a time. Now almost four as Vladi will be focused. And you'll see I Shiny in the top right corner kind of dive up after breakfast up to the get rid of Vladi. A Beautiful team white, great team white, or great teamwork overall here from the hot dogs, and that was a great deciding moment for them. Yeah, and I, it, this just reminds me <laughs> as Balance Breakfast <laughs> gets chased down there. Uh, this just reminds me a little bit of skiing, snowboarding. Bear with me. It okay, seems I'm a far-fetched analogy. When you're skiing or snowboarding and you are afraid, you will start to lean back. This is your instinct. You think leaning back is safe. But if you do that, the physics of it, you start actually speeding up down that mountain and things are just getting worse. I liken that situation a little bit to the stage dive there from ETC. He was cutting off the retreat of uh, the UC Irvine and when you can't retreat what should you do they were trying to lean back there they were moving towards ETC which allowed uh, the University of Washington to get the perfect wailing arrow on the enemy team all four of them dealing massive damage and ma making them unable to use abilities for a while what they perhaps could have done I'm not gonna say should have I never do should have 
what they could have done is jump in forward rather than feeling that they want to lean back, lean forward and go against your instincts. It's difficult. You have to train this. It requires experience. And hey, who knows? Maybe it wouldn't have happened. But I believe maybe this could have happened if they moved towards the west and just attacked. Okay, the ETC is out of position. He's over there. Sure, we ignore him and we go for the other four. Well, we'll see if UC Irvine can become professional snowboarders as well as gamers in game number two. That'll be coming up as this is a best of three series. We'll see what will be occurring.